Got the valve assembly all apart. Um, this is what I discovered. This is the nozzle through which the fuel sprays. And there's a little tiny hole you may be able to see in the center of that. This device here has a pin on it and it rides up and down through that hole based on your adjustment. And it has gear teeth on it. So when you turn, when you turn the shaft, this shaft right here, these teeth, right, when you turn the shaft, these teeth right here drive this block up and down and the pin in and out of this hole. This hole in this part probably has some length and the higher the pin is, is in the hole the more resistance there is to the fuel flowing and the lower the faster it flows. Probably some theory like that. Now remember I couldn't turn this I couldn't turn this uh, very far before it would lock up. Well there may have been debris in there that uh, was jamming up the teeth or that could have been somehow out of position or the rectangular hole that it slides up and down in could have had some debris or dirt in it that didn't allow it to move up and down. Now this right here came out when I removed this valve stem which is a lot of uh, stringy mess. It's probably left over from this packing material wearing. Now this little packing washer here when you tighten up the packing nut these two copper washers are squeezed together and the diameter of this piece is increased um, as it squeezes against the shaft and against the internal bore of this part. Now that's probably a piece of leather and if I can't get it uh, to seal good then I can make another one of those out of leather and put it back together but I'm gonna I think this part's satisfactory enough to reuse. So I'm gonna put it back together with that. Um, how I cleaned out the uh, orifice or the jet, this part here, was by finding something that would go through the hole that wasn't harder than copper. I'm, I'm sorry, wasn't harder than brass. And here's a piece of copper wire. And I just took a strand and put it up in there and turned the uh, jet on it. And figuring the uh, rough end of the copper wire would clean out any carbon or anything. And after spinning it a number of times, I was able to work the strand of wire here through the hole in the orifice. And now when I hold the orifice up in the light and look through it, I can actually see through it. So it's, the, the hole has opened up some now. But now the copper, bear in mind, is softer than brass. So this wouldn't machine the brass hole. So I've, all I've did is removed uh, carbon or other debris that may have been clogging the hole. So I'm going to reassemble the device now and see if it works better. Um, before I noticed over this hole, a little bit of that wire was sticking out of it. I think it could have been debris. And it was spitting fuel. The fuel looked like the little tiny tip of a white feather and it was flashing. It was there and gone, there and gone, there and gone. And then that was the rough running that we heard of the stove. Um, now that I've gotten the debris out of there and fuel can flow freely, hopefully this will work better. Now, I don't have any uh, brake clean, so I've just been using starting fluid as a solvent to blast in and out of these holes and blow any debris out. I think I've got it all clean now. I'm going to use a little bit of grease to put it together, particularly on this uh, compression, on this uh, seal here, on the packing. and. This will uh, hopefully solve our problems. Okay, done a little more work on it. As it turns out, there's a timing issue here. The stem has a set of threads on it that move it in and out, and it opens and closes a seat that's apparently machined in here. Our little uh, block with the wire pin on it rises and falls through this hole. That little block has gear teeth on it and it rides up and down. And so as the stem is turning it's moving in and out and moving the shaft up and down. So the block, if, if you install this incorrectly then you can't raise, you can't lower the block far enough 
because you've seeded out the valve here. So what I did was I turned this, uh, I can't find any instructions online on how to do this correctly, so I seated the valve completely and then I opened the stem one half of a turn. Then I set the block in there that has the teeth in it, kind of a rack and pinion thing that moves the block up and down. And then I, I opened the valve just enough that it clicked one tooth, bumped one tooth up, and then I turned the block down. Now I can get the block all the way down and seat the valve. I believe I've seated the valve. When I don't have the stem in here and I drop the block in, it actually can fall, I think, just a little bit lower than that. So I think I have it in the right position. So now I can raise the block up. I hope that's showing in the video. And I can put the block down and close the seat back here. So we're going to put it together and see if it works. Now if this is... Uh, what this could indicate is that this had been assembled by somebody else incorrectly because that pin was out of this hole which meant the block was all the way up and when I would turn the shaft I could only turn it a little ways before it stopped turning evidently the valve seating. So there's the seated valve and there's the raised block and the pin does come through but notice I can turn the valve quite a bit now. Okay, so I think we can put the packing nut in and maybe do a trial run on this. Most of the Sunday afternoon has gone by while I've been working on this. Here and there, along with going to breakfast and all the other routines that a man has when he wants to stay married. We'll close the packing nut down. And how I figured out there was a timing issue is I put it together and then the shaft wouldn't move very far. And I thought, now wait a minute, this, this assembly is too simple. So I studied it a little more and then I realized, you know, we had those two things that are working together. Okay, so now we have the packing nut snug, and incidentally all this stuff's been put together with a little bit of grease. Ah, look, look how far I can turn that. Okay, well, let's go try it out. I think we're ready to give it a go. A little bit of the gasoline or the uh, white gas has leaked out into the pan there. Been careful not to spill that. The burner flowerette or head, whatever you want to call it on here. Okay, I've returned with the shield. That snap back into place. Make sure everything's okay here. We should still have plenty of fuel inside. I'm going to pour some uh, alcohol in here. Let's go through the priming procedure again. We have white gas down in the bowl down there. Let's see, all these lids are on. I think we're ready to try it. So, we're going to, let's see, we're going to make sure, okay, the valve is closed, so I've seated the valve, and at the same time that's pulled the block and the pin that's coming through the, uh, you know, wait a minute, there's something here, I, something here I didn't do. Let me get a tool. I didn't I didn't tighten that jet. Yeah, that's still loose. Let me get a tool and correct that. Okay, so we're gonna tighten it. 
tighten the uh, orifice or the jet. Okay. Now we put the uh, burner flowerette back on. By the way, if one of you has a manual for this, I would certainly appreciate a copy. Did a little internet searching. I see a picture of one that somebody purchased. And they said when they got it wet, all the ink ran. So apparently someone is um, reproducing the manuals. All right, let's prime it. Let's see where we're off. Okay, so we got our prime. This might flash pretty good here. Well, that's the first time it took two strokes, I think. Okay, so we're away. We're away and cooking. Anxious to see what's going to happen. It's been quite a project. But it's fun to figure these things out. It's part of the I made it philosophy. Whatever it is you need to make, you can make. And whatever it is you need to repair, you can repair. You're just patient. You can study things. You can figure all these things out. I think I'm going to move this fuel away just, just for grants. Okay, I'm going to open the valve. There we go. Oh wow. Sounds so much better. Remember before it was very uh, spitting and very irregular sound. Now we have a very regular sound. Wow. That's awesome. I think I've solved my problem. Now let me go retrieve some water in my tin and we will uh, demonstrate the coffee making. Okay, retrieve the necessary cookware. It's nice to come back outside and find the burner still going. Beautiful. We'll make a couple cups of coffee. I drink coffee in the afternoon sometimes. I'm demonstrating a couple of things, but it's nice to have nice, clean, properly adjusted equipment. This is a Keurig, a cup for a Keurig coffee machine. So you don't have to buy the little uh, one-time use cups. You can pour your coffee in here. Only weighs a few grams. And uh, I think it's perfect for camping. The thing's made to take hot water. It's got a super fine mesh in it. So I believe uh, I can make coffee with this device um, kind of in the style of uh, cowboy coffee but without uh, getting so many uh, grounds in. Now where the water would squirt in for the Keurig machine, there's not a screen there. So I think this could be improved if this cap were sealed up or perhaps that the plastic in there were melted and used to close that hole because we don't need to shoot steamy water through there. I'll come back when the water's boiling. Alright, decided I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can melt that and use its own material to close it up. That would absolutely eliminate any grounds at all getting in our coffee. Soften it up.
I think that'll work. A little more, a little more warmth. Ooh, saw a little flame come off of it. Just about there. See, we still have a couple of holes. Be careful with plastic. It's when it's hot like that, it'll sure stick to your fingers. It's keeping me out. Don't want to get burnt. Okay. So be careful here, I'll end up with a bigger hole than I had. Oh, oh, oh yes! Burn yourself. Okay. There we go. It's all closed up. Using the materials that were here. Got a little bit of stringy plastic. Making me a little jumpy. Okay. Just about got the water boiling. Cleaning plastic off of my knife. Time to oil that. Now I'm not sure. I can actually shut the flame off. If I've got it timed out right and put together properly, I should be able to shut the flame off. We have a rolling boil. Turning it to the left. There we go. Oops. A little bit of flame under there. It wants to keep going. We'll put our coffee in. May still have a little timing issue. I may have to adjust that one tooth. There we go. It's off now. What I'm concerned about is if I can't get that valve fully closed, then the gasoline will, uh, or the white gas, will seep out of the stove, which we don't want that to happen. But of course, in an actual real-life use situation, we would uh, only put in about as much fuel as we were going to use. And then if there was a little a little left after we got done preparing a meal, we would let that uh, let that burn off. Now, I'm not sure back in the day when this was a popular camp stove and was possibly used for backpacking. It certainly could be used for backpacking. It's small enough. Uh, I'm not sure how they carried gasoline. Um, I don't know that I'm completely comfortable with carrying gasoline in my pack. So we'll see how we're doing here. I think it's time to pour a cup of coffee. And there we go. First cup of coffee from the Primus Traveler Stove. Mmm, very hot, very good. Success at last.